I mean, Jared, how did that meeting go? Hi, look, the AGM was actually quite a calm meeting, if you're um, relative to the two EGMs we've had. Um, I think what was quite encouraging was the existing board, um, you know, were, were quite vocal how they look forward to um, our nominees on the board. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it's, it's quite interesting how it's changed now. The dynamic seems to have changed. I mean, we still ra there still are a number of concerns we still have. Right. Um, and we, there are still further changes we would want. But there was definitely a different energy. It wasn't a war of minority shareholders against the board and management. All right, all right. So you guys are more cordial relations right now. Because um, at the previous EGM, I know that uh, as minority shareholders, you had wanted four of your preferred candidates to be elected on the board, and only two of those candidates uh, managed to get on the board. My question is, the other two, uh, will there be further moves to try get them in the steering wheel of where the company goes? Look, I think the result to get two of our candidates who come with excellent backgrounds and we believe we'll be able to add value to Grand Parade is positive. Um, I mean, it's quite clear we wanted two, uh, two others. I think we've gone through the vote. It was, you know, 48 to 52 percent. So they won by, by a really narrow margin. Sure. Um, and I think what it does show, show the existing board, they are under pressure to perform. You know, it doesn't take many shareholders to swing the vote to get our other two on. But I think for now, they need to deliver. I mean, they were... You know, yesterday they did seem more open to ideas and in my engagement with them, they, you know, have committed to delivering. So I think for now we need to let the company be, let our new um, nom nominees, Mark and Renault, go into the board and hopefully they, you know, together take the group forward in the right direction. I mean, I think they're, they're after, you know, if it doesn't go the way we, we want it to go and the company needs to go, then we would need to look, you know, look again what changes need to be made. I'd like to understand, I mean, the, the, the extent of your... As minority shareholders, your unhappiness with what management was doing with the company by asking you, um, how has your investment in Grand Parade worked for you over over these years? Perhaps if you can talk to me the past five years, what, what has it done? So, so it's an interesting question because if you look, there are a number of minority shareholders. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, one, you know, we were just one of the minority shareholders that called for the EGM and probably one of the more vocal ones, but there were others, you know, that were that also called for it together with us. Um, so different people got it at different prices. For us as a firm, um, we've actually done quite well with our investment, but we had to roll up our sleeves to try and lock value and get change. I All think right. if we didn't do this, the share was at 180 going down. It's, right, it's gone from the date we requested the EGM and it was announced from 180 to 350. Right. So Currently, we just saw that on our board. But I mean, have have you you made any losses, or perhaps you gotten at the, because you gotten at the right price, you were shielded from those losses, but others have. Y yes, I, you know, I think it's hard to make a general statement. Different mm -hmm. shareholders got in at different prices. There were people that bought in at six rand and have lost a lot of money. But you know, a lot of the community members have held their shares throughout for dividends and share price growth. They reached a high, and now they've lost. They've lost um, capital, mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, this year is pro the first time in years that the company's not paying a dividend. Mm. So I think uh, you know each minority shareholder will be in a different position. But I think to me, um, probably a, a better way to look at it is you know going forward. I still believe the company's undervalued. I think if the board and management do the right things, um, they the community. Um, institutional shareholders and management can all make money together. What's fair value then if we're currently sitting at 350? Look, I think it's higher. You know, we have a policy generally we don't want to, you know, it doesn't work in our favour to quote what fair values are on the stocks that we're in. Right. But I do think it's higher than, than where it is today. Um, the company the company says they believe the fair value for their assets is 7 Rand. Um, to us, we see value, but we, we really believe capital allocation and strategy needs to be changed and management need to be incentivised in the, uh, to, to deliver returns for shareholders. I mean, those are the two major, you know, major strategic changes we want to see in the short term. All right, so let's talk about that capital allocation because we did speak with management um, at Grand Parade, uh, I think about a week or two ago on the show, and uh, management did uh, say that they continued to place their bets on Burger King and they would continue to ensure that that rollout becomes a success and eventually makes a profit. How do you feel about that? Look, you know, from the time I've spent um, with management on Burger King, uh, I actually am quite confident in Burger King from, from here onwards. I do think they overcapitalized and spent too much money on the business, so it will be hard for them to get a return from the initial capital they put in. But I, I do have faith in Burger King. They've built scale in it. Um, the two that I've been quite vocal about for several months now 
um, are Dunkin' Donuts and Baskin Robbins. Mm -hmm. I do not see in a market like South Africa and with, with that cost base, how you turn those into businesses. And it's something I've been pushing for a number of months for a clear strategy, present to shareholders a business plan, show us how you're gonna deliver returns, because mm -hmm. I can't see it. So those are the two businesses I doubt. I probably agree with management. I think they will unlock value and I think Burger King will at a point deliver the right returns. What point? I mean, what, wh I mean if, if you're working closely with management and you believe mm. in, in the Burger King story, I mean, I must tell you that I can't even remember the last time I had a Burger King and I'm not alone. I actually went um, for one last night. <laughs> 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 but, but, but how long though before we see money actually come in to Burger King? Okay, well, well, well look, I think you've got the first thing is you've got to get the required scale. They've got scale in a number of stores at the moment. I still think, you know, to me, I would hope you probably it's probably going to be two years out before you start seeing decent returns. I don't expect it to be this year. Um, so I still think it is going to take time. Um, but, uh, you know, you can see just on an EBITDA level, the business improving. Right. Baskin Robbins and Dunkin Donuts. Uh, management also uh, said that they admitted, in fact, that they possibly made a mistake with this, um, signaled and indicated that they could possibly looking or be looking to exit this investment. Um, I imagine that this is something you and other minority shareholders would be happy with. Yes. I mean, look, I would have liked them to exit a long time ago. They mm -hmm. spent a lot of money over the last year, um, into you know, put a lot of money over the last year into these assets. And I don't think they're going to generate the required return. So, you know, it's late, but I think they finally made a call that they can't, they're not going to be able to deliver the returns. Look, I'm an open-minded shareholder. I ask them, present, present to shareholders your business plan and show us how you will deliver returns. I, I personally don't see it, and I think they finally got to a point where they're saying they're going to look to exit. Right. And I think just put uncertainty on those two brands so that investors and shareholders can see the cash drain will stop would do a lot for investor confidence. What was said about the gaming assets? Because I do know that there is a certain uh, interest and also a certain optimism about the delivery of the gaming assets, which have, I mean, delivered to an extent over the, over the years, but we do know now, given the um, difficulty in the economy, given tighter regulations, and also given the consumer being under pressure, that those assets would also, you know, not be performing as they once did. But what do you feel about the strategy for the gaming assets? Look, if you look at Grand Parade's history, they've been very successful in gaming. Um, if in the most recent results, the gaming assets relative to other gaming casinos in South Africa, I think outperformed. Um, gaming, you're right, is tough in the country now, you know, given the economy. But I still think they've got quality gaming assets, um, probably slower growth than what they would like, but still quality assets. And I'm quite comfortable with those assets. Mm -hmm. we, we have seen, uh, is it three uh, CEOs uh, leave? the seat there in the past 24 months, in fact two uh, this year with the latest announcement being made this week. Uh, what was said about uh, management and ensuring stability there at the top? Well, you know, if you read, uh, in, our ret in our letter that we wrote mm. to the board and we published it on SENS, one of our key concerns was that we didn't believe the board can retain quality management. And they, uh, they stated at the EGM that, er, uh, that all the management that have left has left for personal reasons. The next day a new CEO resigned. Mm. So I think that is a key issue in the company. They've got a problem, they can't retain people. Um, that needs to change. Uh, it's, a, it's a key concern of ours. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get to know Prabashni well. You know, she was only there three or four months. Sure. Um, but I knew the other management quite well. And yeah, yeah we haven't, it, it hasn't been positive, the, the high turnover of management, it needs to change. But I think, you know, given you know, the two new, both having Mark and Ronell on the board, I think they're, they'll also help push the board to create a culture where management want to work there, where you can get the right quality people to run this business. Sure. Well, let us leave it there. I suppose time will only tell if uh, those two new appointments and the latest AGM will be sufficient to steer the ship there and uh, get the price of Grand Parade up at uh, seven rand a share, I believe you say management believes that's fair value, but thanks uh, so much for your time. That was Jared Weiner, who was the uh, co-founder of Westbrook Alternative Asset Management and also the fund manager of the Westbrook Special Opportunities Fund.